The principles of God are clear. This man was being prosperous because he saw Joseph and he dealt well with Joseph. Now we know the story of Joseph, that, the, that his wife, because he said he was a good-looking man, wanted to sleep with him. Joseph didn't break the character of God. He fled for his wife when she went after him, left his clothes. Obvious looking sin, right? Look, here he is, here's his clothes in my bedroom. Now, what other conclusion can you come to? He must have went after that man's wife. He gets thrown in prison. He didn't do nothing wrong. He brought honor to the man's house because he fled. Now he's in prison. You think he might ask himself again, man, how do I keep getting into this? Why is this happening to me? We ask that to ourselves. We just need to trust God. No matter what's happening, He's with you. And He will accomplish His task. If you're doing something wrong, then change it. Now, verse... Um, let's, let's pick it up now with the story. We want to get past the falsely accused. The, man, the master puts him in prison. And I'm going to pick up the story now in verse... Uh, Let's see. Chapter 40. Yeah, let's pick it up in chapter 40, verse 1. Now he's in prison. Uh, let's, let's back up one verse. Let's back up one verse. Is, is I want to bring out a point here. Everywhere Joseph went, we see he didn't compromise in the truth of God. The principles he was taught, he still has. Verse 23, it says, the keeper of the prison looked not anything that was under all his hand because the Lord was with him, talking about Joseph, that even the keeper of the prison now turns everything over to Joseph to be in charge of. So now we see Joseph prospering as, as a, a slave. Now we see Joseph prospering as a prisoner. And everybody around him, they're looking at Joseph, they're like, God's with this man. How do people outside us Look at us inside. How do they look at us? Can they see God prospering us individually? If we're doing what God says to do, we should be that shining light. We should be saying, that, hey, I want to be a part of that people. That should be our example. That uh, We should have a good report from those without the Bible says. And now it's verse, chapter 40, verse 1. So it came to pass after these things that the butler and the king of Egypt and his baker offended their lord the king. And Pharaoh was angry with those two officers against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers, and he put them into prison. And we know the story that these guys are put under Joseph, and Joseph takes care of these people. The dreams begin to set in, verse 9, so the chief butler told his dream to Joseph. These two men had a dream. Joseph hears the dream, and in his dream says, Behold, I... A vine was before me, and the vine, there were three branches, and it was as though it were budded, and her blossoms showed forth, and the clusters came forth, hit white grapes. And the Pharaoh's cup, I'm trying to read this because they have almost no light up here now, without that light on the side. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days, and yet in three days all the Pharaoh's uh, will lift up your head and restore you to the place, and you shall deliver Pharaoh, Pharaoh's cup into his hands in the form of matter which you were. Now, we know the story came to pass. But then he tells the guy, but think on me. When this comes to pass, don't forget me. I told you this. In other words, get me out of here. I'm in prison. Sure enough, it came to pass. We know the story of the baker. He had the same dream three days. He's dead. They hung him. And so that one didn't go well. Chapter 41. Two years later, two more years transpired that he's still in prison. You think you might ask, why am I going through this? I'm sure it had to cross his mind once in a while. Two more years comes to pass. We know the story of Pharaoh and a dream. The seven years of lean and the seven years of plenty of Look what he says. I want to talk about just real quick, like in, in this chapter. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, verse 16. It is not in me. In other words, he wants to know the dream. The 
the uh, person he revealed the dream to remembers him. He comes back. That person tells the Pharaoh, look, I was in prison. This guy told me the dream. It all came to pass. He might be able to help you. Joseph could have come in and said, yeah, I know dreams. I could do that. You know, he could have made himself look good getting out of prison. But you see, there's a humbleness in here. He had dreams as a child. He went around talking about, hey, I got this dream. Look, y'all going to bow down to me. Now he's coming out. He said, look, it's not me who has these dreams. It's God who reveals this stuff. You see, there's a little bit of a change in the way it's written that we can interpret. There must be a change in his character. And I would think that after all this time in prison and being sold as a slave, it probably changed his character a little bit. There was a lot of humility at this point in his life. He says, Pharaoh, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer. No, it's in his foot. That's what happened. So he goes and he reveals it to God. In Joseph, verse 25, said to Pharaoh, the dream that Pharaoh is one, and that God has shown Pharaoh what he's about to do. See, Joseph was very careful in the wording of how he approached this at this particular time. He had been through a lot, and he certainly didn't want to offend his God. He knew that if he was going to do something, it had to be that God had to be glorified. He had the opportunity here to show the character and said, Yep, I can interpret dreams. You know, I talked to somebody on the phone just not too long ago, and he calls up and says, Look, I'm a prophet. Okay. How do you know you're a prophet? And well, he goes on explaining them. And I said, well, I can't say you are or you're not. I, I don't know you. You know, I said, well, all you do is, is see if you prophesy something if it comes to pass or not. So I don't know. You know, Larry just left message on the phone. He said, won't call him up. Call him up. Say, I'm a prophet. Okay. How do I know? You know, I've learned through experience. I'm just not going to say, no, you're not. I don't even know the man. <laughs> That's between them and God. I don't, it's, not, it's not for me to say. What I'm saying here is that if God used you in the past to do something, if you come back and say, oh, I can do that, chances are God's not going to use you next time. You see, so Joseph was careful. His, his character was refined so that when God used him, Joseph knew it had to come from God. It couldn't come from him. The glory had to go to God. And even the way he says it now, he says, God has shown Pharaoh what he's about to do. That's the point I want to bring on. That's the story of the seven years of lean and seven years of plenty. We know that. But I do want to ask you a question about that. Knowing that it's coming, what have you been doing to prepare? What have you been doing to prepare for your seven years of lean? Is your house in order? Are your bills paid for? Have you got out of debt? Are you living within your means? Is your character being refined that you give glory to God so that he can bless you later on and use you? Preparing for the seven years of lean is more than just financial. It's spiritual. You and I have a job that's coming. There's going to be seven years of lean. This world is going into a depression it has never seen before. Either that or the Bible is lying to us. I believe it's not lying to us. That means that you and I need to be prepared in every way, shape, and form to trust God. And if He has to take away whatever you have, He will get you prepared. Or you will be out. And I don't mean out the church here. I mean out His kingdom. If He's called you to be a part. And that's why we're working feverishly to bring things in order. So that God can bless the household here. That he can bless your household. That he can bless you individually. So that he can use you like he was using Joseph. Because the seven years of lean are almost on our doors if they're not already here. Because the economy, I don't care what the stock market says. A bunch of greedy vultures in the stock market. I'm sorry, they are. They don't care what happens to the economy as long as they're making money. And they will, they will sell you out quick. To get the buck. So I hope you realize that. And I keep telling them, like, don't get stuck into this. Be ready. If you get your 401ks and you get your money back, or a lot of it back, get ready to move it quick. Because the next time it will happen fast and, you go, and there won't be no recovery. You will not get what you had. 
All right, so let's move on. I'm, I'm, I'm almost out of time. Let's go to uh, chapter 41. Chapter 41. Uh, no, I'm going to go to chapter 45. Chapter 45. Then I'm going to come back to chapter 42. Just a second. Joseph said to his brethren, remember the seven years of, of, of lean begins to hit? We know the seven years of plenty. He told Pharaoh what was going on. Pharaoh put him in charge of everything. Everything was given to Joseph. What do you think God put him through those trials? Joseph had to be able to deal with this position in a way that he would not fail. The only way to know that he's not going to fail is to go through the trials before you get there. He had to focus on what was important in his life. He began to have the riches with Pontifer. He had the lack in prison. And he knew how to trust God by that time. So that God put him in this position, he was the second most powerful person on the face of the earth. Those dreams begun to come to pass now that everybody's talking to bow down to Joseph. The sun, the moon, and everything was, was down to that seven years of lean. His family began to bow down. And Joseph had to remain focused on God and balance out that it wasn't important anymore that he was the most powerful person under Pharaoh or the wealthiest man under Pharaoh. Imagine being the most powerful. You're, you're a Bill Gates. You know, you're... Or, or, in fact, he wasn't even near as powerful as Joseph was at that time. But to be able to serve God in that position. Joseph had to be able to be tried to be put into that. You and I, at the end time tribulation, to serve those people out there will cost you. You will have to be counted and be tried so that when God uses you, you can bring glory to God. I've been telling people about this TV show we're trying to work on. I think the only way that God will bless that is that we can remain focused to give God the glory. To reach this generation with the method that God has used for today. Otherwise, we will miss the mark. And we will be useless. And I believe he's going to help us. If we can focus on putting him first and trust him, I believe we'll be blessed. When we put out that, those, the, the two seeds, our mailing list in less than two and a half to three months would have doubled if we could afford to put everybody on the mailing list. I'm telling you, doubled in just two and a half months. I believe we're on the right path. If we can just focus on how God wants us to be, that He will be glorified and we can grow the work and reach more and more people. Now Joseph's brothers come back to him. We're in, we're in Genesis chapter 45. We, we begin reading in verse 5. Now therefore, be not grieved nor angry. His brother sold him. He was a captive. He was a prisoner. And now he's the second most powerful man on the earth at the time. His brothers come to him. We see in chapter 42, chapter 43, verses 1 and 2. I won't go back there because of time. That they had to go buy food from him. They had to go face the loss and go back down to Egypt. Joseph, they realized that his brothers, that he's there. He says, therefore, do not grieve nor angry with yourselves that you sold me here, for God did send me before you to preserve life. By that time, Joseph understood what God had in store for him. He finally was able to answer the question, why am I going through this? When he saw his brothers, he said, God has sent me here to preserve life. Why Joseph now, following the last great generation on Satan's Most Wanted? Because you and I have been called to preserve life. If we can't develop the character of a Joseph, then God won't be able to use us to preserve life. What special task does God have for you? The future will tell you. 